Right, perfect. That'll be a perfect segue talking about our European offtake for battery minerals. So we're getting into Arafura. ARU, the ticker, someone that Gina pumped a bit of money into recently. So they're in a trading halt regarding uh, execution of a binding offtake announcement. So they've got the Nolan's Rare Earth Project uh, just north of Alice Springs. So that is a monazite project. If you go back to the Rare Earth uh, Spectacular or did, there's uh, obviously your clay Rare Earths, but your primary primary ones are the carbonatites. But then this is a monazite. So who, said, who said you couldn't be smart, Maddie? Look at look at you. Oh no, I oh, know. I'm not getting slagged on YouTube about my intelligence. I'm <laughs> so Arafura. So they've been look. They've trended down a bit uh, last year. So we're going to talk about Arafura, uh, Hastings, and Linus. So look, get, let's give a bit of an overview of this sort of rare earth space. And as we discussed in the podcast that I did previously with the OD six lads, uh, Linus LYC are the only producing rare earth mining company in Australia. But the ones coming online, you've got Hastings, uh, you've got Arafura that are potential, then you've got Iluca as well. In the ASM. ASM and Iluca for mineral sands that they're going to be extracting rare earths. So, look, there's there's a bit happening. Um, so I want to go through, or let, let's just compare the projects because Linus, for people who don't know, is just an absolute outlier in terms of in terms of grade. So, there, look, Arafura, look, Percentages aren't percentages in uh, rare earths. A lot to do with the processing, a lot to do with percentages of NDPR. So NDPR is what you use in the your wind turbines and the uh, electric motors. So that's the primary thing that people want for rare earths. So look, Arafura, their reserve is uh, 29.5 million tonnes at 2.9% total rare earth oxide and a quarter of that is NDPR. But then you go to Linus, Mount Weld, so instead of 2.6%, they are their reserve is 8.6% total rare earth oxide. So their grade is substantially higher. They're a carbonatite. So just shows that Linus's Mount Weld is the outlier, and that's why it survived during the times of um, lower production. But back on Narafura with the loan, uh, they got given a 600 mil US loan from a German export credit agency, Eula Humes. That was announced the other week. So, but that was conditional on them securing offtake agreements with German companies. So, is this offtake going to be with the German company? Trav, what do you think, mate? Plenty to plenty to unpack here. And as you said, it's all tied in the offtake and the loans and everything are all part of one big friendly package, aren't they? Absolutely. And as I'll touch on a little bit later, financing this project is a mammoth effort. Like we shouldn't understate how challenging financing this is. Um, and to your point, yes, it's all got to be sort of in- interconditional. There's there's equity, there's debt, there's concessional finance, there's um, strategic partners, all of this stuff has to come together and offtake is a big part of that. And, and every every party along the way needs needs sort of some level of certainty that the product is going to be paid for and there's some price security around what, what's going to be received for that product. Um, and Arafura's plan, let's just keep in mind that they're in, they're in trading halt right now. So we don't know what this offtake agreement is um, or, or how important it is, but uh, you know, in, 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 in my mind, if, it, if, if this offtake agreement actually means that the whole financing package can fall together. That's a pretty important um, potential announcement. And Arafura's plan is, is to go from uh, from ore all the way to oxide at the one site. So that's that's a that's mining, that's a beneficiation plant, an extraction plant, and a separation plant all at the same site. And that's to produce 4.4 thousand tonnes of NDPR oxide plus another you know, 0.4 um, thousand tonnes of, of a mixed heavy rare earth oxide from from the same site every year and you know this this is going to be a massive project if it can be financed the capex is 1.4 billion dollars aussie at the moment and and plus another 200 million dollars um contingency is, is is in their latest capex update that came out in november so that on our numbers they've got about 150 million dollars cash at the moment and and they're well placed to to bring this entire funding package together given Hancock came on the register as a 10% cornerstone in their last raise. And the, the offtake, as I mentioned, is going to be a huge piece and, and the financing package is, is, is absolutely mammoth. And one thing I, I really wanted to touch on for this, this company, it looks like they're pretty close to getting a finance package that's actually going to 
fund and build this mine. A massive, massive capex number. So oh, the thing that stands out to me is compare this to Hastings. If you go back 12 months, it really looked to me like Hastings was going to be the next rare earth producer in Australia. They they were super well advanced. They had NAIF supportive. Um, they had agreements with export credit agencies in in, in, in Europe or, or letters of support. They they It looked like they were going to put together a commercial banking syndicate. Um, their market cap was large enough to justify a pretty hefty equity raise that looked like the whole thing could come together and they'd be able to announce FID. The study, DFS was done. CapEx was being updated. It really looked like they were about to pull the trigger on the final raise to build this thing. And in the last six months, you know, Hastings share price is down 35% versus Arafura up 45%. And especially, you know, very recently, um, the, the Hastings CFO has actually left the company and he's, he's gone and joined as the CFO of a, of, a, of a lithium developer. So if you're trying to pull together an extremely complicated financing package, and I'll touch on why it's so, so complicated because the financiers are not across this commodity. This is a niche commodity. So the lenders actually have to technically get up to speed on what the probability of their repayment is actually going to be. And they need to get comfortable from a credit it has to be get credit approved. So there's a committee that has to say, yes, I'm comfortable that this, this will all be okay. And that's really hard when you have a niche commodity and there's very few peers to point to that actually do this well. So, so the financiers do a lot of work to get up to speed and this process takes a long time to get them all, up, all ready to actually approve financing something like this. The very last person you want to lead, leave the company when you're going through a big financing process like this is the CFO. The CFO, in my mind, is the person that is leading that financing work stream and he's left Hastings. And, and now we're in a position where Arafura looks like it'll be the next rare earth producer if they can pull it together faster from a financing perspective. Because um, Hastings, their capex was significantly lower than, uh, than Arafura, but I assume that is because Arafura are located literally in the middle of Australia, so they had to have as much essentially pretty close to downstream processing on site due to uh, transport. It's a combination of of the remoteness, but also the level of, of separation that's happening at the site as well. I think Hastings were planning to produce a mixed rare earth carbonate as opposed to the separated oxides. God, I can't wait till this uh, podcast grows and expands and we can employ some metallurgists and, and things to go through with this in detail. So, But, hey, good. No, don't not don't take away the effort we're putting into it. And, look, another note I want to put on this, why, why the German interests. So in 2019, Germany announced that they're getting rid of all their coal. They want to shut down 84 of the coal-fired power stations. So in 19 years they want to be fully – out of coal, so and that they, they were currently at forty percent renewable energy, but they want that to get to sixty five to eighty percent by twenty forty to meet their climate change targets. So and that's well, that's forty five billion dollars they're attributed to get that to get that lift. So they're going to be pumping it into wind turbines, which is what this NDPR is for. And super interestingly, they're also getting rid of all their uranium power stations. Yeah. So kind of counterintuitive to what you said, promoting the greener energy but that's a decision they've made yeah so that must be so it must be coming from wind solar and what gas gas must make up the remaining 20 percent so let's let's hypothesize why not 